Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a discovery of yet another new unusual asteroid that we didn't really expect to find. In this video we're going to be talking about this recently discovered asteroid known as 2009 LF6 and we'll also talk about why it's so unusual but also if it's dangerous or not. Welcome to What The Math. And let's start with a brief review of the solar system. In our solar system, there are several regions where you can find asteroids. The biggest one, or I guess the most popular one, is in this location, and this is between the orbit of Mars and Jupiter. This is what we refer to as the asteroid belt. This is also where you can find objects like Ceres and Vesta. Then we have, slightly farther away, the region known as the Kuiper belt, and this is where you can find objects like Pluto, Sedna, uh, Haumea, and so on. And a lot of these objects are classified as minor planets or dwarf planets and are not necessarily asteroids. But there are a lot of asteroids in this region as well. And all of this is past the orbit of Neptune, but still not as far away as the so-called Ur cloud that uh, we don't really have simulated here, but it's basically the region past Kuiper Belt where you can find a lot of cometary objects and this extends um, up to about one light year away from our solar system, so it's pretty far away. There are also several more unusual areas around the solar system, such as, for example, the orbit of Jupiter, where you can find even more asteroids. This is the so-called Trojans of Jupiter, and you can see them in green, and they're formed through the gravitational interaction of Jupiter with various asteroids, and because of its mass and because it's so powerful, essentially, it's uh, able to maintain a very constant orbit for these asteroids in its uh, Lagrange points, which can be uh, seen in an uh, orbit of roughly around 60 degrees from the orbit of Jupiter. So you can also find asteroids here. But very recently we've been discovering asteroids in the inner solar system, um, as a matter of fact, within the orbit of Earth. Now, we've only discovered about 20 of them, but uh, this year alone we've discovered two that we really didn't expect to find, because they're actually really large. And the most recently discovered one, this is the one we're talking about today, is this right here. This is known as 2019 LF6. So these asteroids um, are referred to as interior Earth object asteroids, also known as Atire or Apohile asteroids are named after some of the first ones we've discovered. And this right here is actually the Atira asteroid, and as you can see, it even has a small partner next to it. So these unusual asteroids um, are, well, actually they're very interesting to us for one reason. They all seem to be in the region within the orbit of Earth, and normally pass very close to Venus or Mercury, which can potentially perturb them gravitationally and then send them on the way to Earth. In other words, a lot of these asteroids have a relatively high chance of one day making it to the Earth's orbit and basically coming for a somewhat unwanted visit. And the problem with these asteroids is that a lot of them are actually sort of large. The one we just discovered is roughly around 1.3 kilometers in diameter, and that makes it, uh, well, basically a kind of a world killer um, asteroid. If it collides with Earth, nothing good will happen. The asteroid that killed the dinosaurs was uh, roughly around five times bigger, but even at 1.3 kilometers, it would cause tremendous destruction. And this is why these asteroids are so interesting to us, because uh, they do have a, a slightly higher chance of coming close to Earth than other asteroids. But luckily for us, we haven't found that many yet, uh, and unluckily for us, it's very difficult to see them. And let me try to demonstrate why. So here's Earth, here's us trying to look at those asteroids from Earth, and you'll notice that Atira asteroid is very, very close to the Sun. It's basically too close to the Sun for us to see. It's almost impossible for regular telescopes to notice it, mostly because if it's located between us and the Sun, then it's just going to be too dark for us to see, and if it's on the opposite side of the Sun, where it does reflect sunlight, the Sun is just too bright and overshadows um, the asteroid's brightness. In other words, we'll just not be able to find it because it's very difficult to see such small objects in front of such a bright object like our Sun. There is, however, at least one telescope that's able to do a relatively good job. This is known as the Zwicky Transient Facility that's able to detect objects that um, often appear and disappear relatively quickly. And this is exactly how 
the object that we just discovered and also the previous asteroid that I talked about right there above my head have been discovered by the scientists in June uh, on June 19th of 2019. So this is a relatively recent discovery. And I guess what makes this really interesting is that it's actually a really large rock. And for the longest time, um, most scientists believe that we've sort of taken care of the larger rocks already. We've found all of the larger asteroids in the solar system. We've discovered all of the ones that could potentially collide with Earth. And then this comes along from basically the region near the sun where we just couldn't really see it. Now, I actually tried to simulate the orbit slightly better using Universe Sandbox. And here you can kind of see that um, even though it does come sort of close to the orbit of Mercury and also the orbit of Venus, luckily for us, its inclination is relatively high, so it doesn't have the same uh, plane of orbit as the other planets. So the chance for it to be affected by, for example, Mercury, that it just came relatively close to, and um, the chance for it to be affected by Venus is low. And even if it does get affected by them, it will still maybe not really make it to the um, orbit of Earth at all. So um, for the most part, it's not really a dangerous asteroid. It's not going to come close to Earth anytime soon. And the chance for collision here is super, super low, actually almost non-existent. But however, there is always a chance that there might be another one of these unusual Atira asteroids hiding in this region. And that one might come closer to Earth. And this is why we definitely have to um, try to find a way to look for these asteroids better than we are doing right now, uh, because there's probably a lot of them hiding in between planet Earth and the Sun. Now, this is a new group of asteroids. We don't really know much about it. We also don't really understand them really well. We don't really know how they were able to stay there. Uh, but we believe that these are just the leftovers of the formation of the solar system possibly even um, leftovers from collisions of Mercury, Venus, or Earth. And what we know about this asteroid specifically is that it orbits Sun um, roughly around 151 days per year, and um, it has a relatively high eccentricity of 0.4. It also is unusually large, as I mentioned, 1.3 kilometers in diameter, which is basically a very destructive asteroid if it collides with Earth. But since most of these asteroids normally have a very high inclination, um, usually over 20 degrees inclination as a matter of fact, uh, they don't really pose as much of a threat. Most of them probably got this inclination through in the interaction with other planets, and they will very likely stay in this position for many, many, many millions and billions of years. But since Zwicky Transient Facility was able to discover two asteroids within a short period of time, and both of them are sort of large-ish, also both of them lie in a very peculiar region, very close to the orbit of Earth, it means that we need to find new techniques and new telescopes, and possibly even launch a space telescope to try to find more of these interior Earth objects that potentially pose a much bigger threat to us than the asteroids from the Kuiper's Belt. And one of the ways we could maybe look for these asteroids is to use a probe similar to the Parker Solar Probe that's currently moving closer and closer to the Sun. These probes, um, or I guess these telescopes in this particular orbit, would be able to detect objects that are closer to the Sun and would be able to find objects that are invisible for us uh, from Earth. So having a bunch of telescopes maybe uh, behind the orbit of Earth or on a much closer orbit to the Sun and then looking at various um, rocks orbiting here would be a lot more efficient and also would prevent uh, these unusual surprises of us discovering an object so close to planet Earth. There are obviously no uh, current missions that are planned for this yet, but I think as we discover more larger and scarier rocks closer to home, we'll probably eventually plan something similar to this or find ways for us to look for these asteroids from planet Earth that we currently don't really have. That's all I wanted to mention in this video for now because that's really all we know. Most importantly, don't worry, it's definitely not going to collide with planet Earth. Anyway, until we learn more about this particular asteroid or until we discover more, we're going to stop this here and do a follow-up once we know more. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, come back tomorrow to learn something else and maybe even share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out and as always, bye bye.